Good day and welcome to another interesting edition of your program, Infrastructure Weekly. I am Yuranko Abosede Omowi. On this edition of the program, we will, as usual, be taking you around the nation to take a closer look at some of the infrastructure projects of the Muhammad Buhari administration and the impacts the projects are making on the lives of ordinary Nigerians all over the country. We will be right back after this timeout to set sail and go into the program proper. Stay tuned. Coming together with opportunity. Uh, this is what Infrastructure is the backbone of development, which explains the Buhari government's efforts at bridging the facility gap. Infrastructure Weekly is a television package designed to bring you latest information on hundreds of development projects going on in various sectors all over the nation. There is no state in Nigeria today where you will not see our contractors busy at work. Power generation, rural electrification, road rehabilitations, national housing scheme, construction of roads and rail lines across the country, you name it. We are now able to produce 7,000 megawatt of power. That is no longer debatable. Infrastructure Weekly is Nigerians working together for a better Nigeria. So be better informed to take better informed decisions. Watch Infrastructure Weekly, showing on Channels Television, Thursdays 2.30 p.m., NTA Network, Wednesdays 5 p.m., and Co TV News, Fridays at 8 p.m. Infrastructure Weekly, making development known. Thanks so much for staying tuned. The issue of repair works being done on bridges across the country has not been far away from public discourse, with several avoidable tragedies occurring due to inadequate maintenance of bridges across the country. With this in mind, the federal government says it is commencing a program to repair bridges and elongate their lifespan. Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, who announced this, also disclosed that the Federal Executive Council has approved the remedial and repair works on the nation's longest bridge, the third mainland bridge in Lagos. The last project that was approved was for the repair and rehabilitation of the third mainland bridge as part of our national ongoing bridge repair and maintenance. Many of our bridges had just been left really without maintenance. This contract is for 18.874 billion. Again, it was conceived in 2011, but it wasn't awarded because there were uh, no uh, budgetary provisions to support it. We have created a budgetary provision for it as part of, as I said, a national bridge maintenance strategy because we're seeing our bridges haven't been maintained for decades. So this was for 18.874 billion to Borini Prono, one of the consortium of companies who first built the bridge. And essentially what they'll be doing is pile repair was pile repairs. Piles are the foundations that hold the bridge. Those are the things that are that are drilled into the ground to form the foundation of the bridge. They need to go down, dive inside, check the, uh, st uh, the, the, the uh, steel and uh, iron casings, and also the concrete casings to see what needs repairs, what needs cleaning, what needs replacement. Uh, we're starting with the first 33 piles that are in very uh, critical condition, then another set of 19 piles, and then 44 piles, and a general maintenance of 177 piles that form the entire foundation of the bridge. Those are the uh, largely civil engineering and related work. The nation's major highways will continue to get attention and will be funded to completion. Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatini Fashola, disclosed this while on an inspection tour of the Enugu Onicha Expressway. The minister added that the result of the efforts being put in by the government to make roads more marchable all year round is now visible with less travel time and less waste of man hours commuting from one place to another across the country. 
The federal government's strategy of boosting the nation's economy through infrastructure development across the country has started yielding results on the Enugu to Portakot Highway project in the southeastern zone of the country. About 58 kilometers Enugu or nature bound of the Enugu to Portakot Expressway under construction will soon reach completion stage. In the past, some of the funds provided for the interstate federal roads were diverted to build community roads while neglecting the interstate roads, which will power trans states and regional commerce as goods and services would be delivered on them. However, with this present government of change coming on board, the deployment of resources has been one of value for money. The world will try and keep it in moderable condition year round whilst the repair and the construction goes on. You will see that also it is a very erosion prone area. Some of the sections we have crossed, you will see that the contractor has had to construct uh, concrete drains in the median, in the middle, if you were photographing. You will also see side drains uh, because of the need to protect the road after it is done so that we take away water. Um, so that's where we are. I think that uh, the people of this community have a better story to tell. Part of the reformed measures has come with this change and the Sukuk funding intervention positively having multiplier effects. The Buari administration is restoring lost jobs for construction workers, creation of indirect jobs through support workers like food vendors, suppliers of materials like sand, laterites and water tankers. The commitment of the federal government to build the nation's vital infrastructure has been taken very seriously with the injection of more funds and regular payments by the present government to contractors who have not been paid for over three years is manifesting gradually. You will also have noticed that the Sukuk intervened in getting some progress here. So uh, hopefully we will do more Sukuks uh, in order to get more money to some of our contractors. These were some of the routes that I complained of last year where the budgets were reduced. So uh, that's the real cycle of our pro measurement of progress. What they are doing where we are today is to do soil cement stabilization before they now put the stone base, before they put the binder core. So on this side, which is seven kilometers, uh, they are trying to build the foundation of the road and the pavement. Uh, the road, the, the condition of the road before we start this project. The road was totally deteriorated on both sides. People are not passing. We are doing our best to always keep one side moving while we construct the other road because we cannot divert the traffic where we are constructing this road. This road is a major road, heavy traffic. We have no option that to block one side and construct the other side. We are doing it in order to have the traffic flowing. The President Mohamed Obwari led administration's delivery on provision of good governance and infrastructure is across board without bias to party leanings as the Nigerian state is not defined by party affiliations but people deserving of good governance and best of infrastructure for their comfort and economic activities. Work continues and this reinforces what we say that the time scale for our road uh, projects are quite expensive because whereas in, even within cities where you are building 5 kilometers, 2 kilometers, we are building hundreds of kilometers in dual carriage way. So um, we urge you to continue to bear with us. We are making progress and the contractor assures us that at the end of the year there will be much more significant progress in that way. Thank you very much for the speed uh, at uh, Enugu Portakot Road. Uh, thank you. We pass there, you know, from time to time. We also stop to look at what they are doing. And I can attest that they are doing a, you know, very solid uh, job. You know, the little one that come into Ebony from uh, Enugu State, that's near access to Uburu. That's about three kilometers per. I inspected it about, about last week. 
And I can attest they are doing a beautiful job. You know, it's a good job that they are doing, and the speed is very reasonable. We are therefore highly encouraged by the steps being taken by the federal government to address the problems, and also by your pragmatic approach to resolving some of them. And certainly no surer or better way to understand, apply, and consign, and through a personal inspection, the consigned goods. We are confident that this visit will prompt a more expeditious execution or completion of ongoing projects on federal highways in the state for the use and benefit of our people. The impact of reviving road infrastructure across the country is positively improving the ease of doing business by reducing travel time on completed road sections, making uncompleted sections temporarily more motorable, reducing the cost of travel and movements of supplies, including food and farm produce, those restoring production and ultimately growth to the economy. And the road will The federal government has promised to ensure the second Niger Bridge gets the required attention to take it to completion. Minister of Power, Works and Housing Babatini Fashola disclosed this while on an inspection tour of the bridge. The enhanced economic activities, excessive access to load and the age of the bridge put pressure on the existing Niger Bridge. The bridge which was constructed in 1965 has lasted 53 years. In order to maintain effective use of the bridge, the present administration under the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing is rehabilitating the existing one and constructing the second Niger Bridge within the road corridors. First night, the existing Niger Bridge was constructed in the year 1965 and then commissioned on 4th of January 1966. From 1965 to date, we have had a last span of around 53 years. Then, if you look at the bridge, though the ministry has done a lot of work to strengthen the existing Niger Bridge, but due to the excessive acid load, the age of the bridge, and the, the enhanced economic activities within the road corridors between the southeast and south south part of the Nigeria, this thing then compelled the federal government through the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing to initiate and commence the the construction of the second Niger Bridge, where we are today. The President Muhammadu Buhari administration has devised the funding strategy to ensure that work is ongoing on the construction of the second Niger Bridge and rehabilitation of the existing bridge. The main project is being handled by construction company Julius Berger with a contract sum of 210 billion naira and the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing is ensuring the completion of early works on the project. An essential project, like I said earlier, connecting Lagos to Mombasa port in Kenya. So it's a project that is very critical, not only to Nigeria economy, but to the countries along the road corridor, which include Nigeria, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Uganda, and Kenya. Apparently the project is to connect Lagos port to Mombasa port which will enhance economic activities not only in Nigeria but in Africa in general. These works are currently ongoing at the two ends of the bridge at Onicha and Asaba Axis. It involves the design of the road, soil investigation, preliminary and final engineering drawing, also comprising of piling works. It is a project that is very critical not only to Nigeria's economy but also to countries along the corridors. At the completion of this major bridge, Nigerians will witness the impact of this present administration's economic recovery and growth plan, as well as a better life. We will be back after this break to take a look at the ongoing inauguration of projects by the Transmission Company of Nigeria and the effect this is having on transmission and distribution of power across the country. Stay tuned. London, New York or Lagos, business or holiday, home or office, you can now carry out your tax transactions from anywhere in the world. You can now file all your tax returns, pay online, get a receipt and even process your tax clearance certificate from anywhere in the world online and in real time. All you need to do is log on to www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-services and be introduced to the world of innovation, convenience and transparency from the FIRS. You can also pay stamp duty as you register a new company with the CAC or 
or for other transactions that request stamp duty payment online. You can also file your withholding tax returns and determine the withholding tax deducted from you is in government covers so that you can get your receipt within 45 days as long as the deduction has been remitted. Yes, all of this and more online at www.firs.gov.ng slash e-services. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Please note that all FIRS services are free of charge. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. It pays to pay your tax. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, the program is Infrastructure Weekly, where we X-ray the infrastructure agenda of the Muhammadu Buhari administration. You can get in touch with us for comments, feedback and inquiries on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Infrastructure Weekly and on Twitter at Infra underscore Weekly. The Transmission Company of Nigeria, in furtherance of the objectives of the federal government in the past sector, says it will continue to work with all stakeholders in the sector to clear up all issues leading to the collapse of the national grid a few days back. The company assured all Nigerians that effort aimed at addressing this continues apace at all levels. Moving on from there, the issue of the nation's power grid has over the years been a matter of hot debate among most observers with a grid that could not accommodate more than 3,000 megawatts of electricity before now. This has however been ramped up and it went to another level at the start of the year. The Transmission Company of Nigeria started what it's referred to as a commissioning of 90 projects designed to improve the ability of the company to transmit power being generated by the nation's various power generating plants. Since then, many of the power projects have been commissioned and improvements have been noticed. We'll present to you the next phase on how far the project has progressed and the impact on everyday lives of the people. The issue of the national grid for the distribution of electricity around the country has been hoped for discuss for a long time with no meaningful action taken to address the issue or those actions taken being half-hearted at most. This situation had led the sector to stand still with generation and distribution ahead of transmission, taking it difficult for Nigerians to have access to power even at the best of times. Since the assumption of office of the Buhari administration, however, the need to expand the national grid to over 10,000 megawatts had been on the front banner. The initial capacity was less than 5,000 megawatts. The desire to continuously improve on the grid capacity was encapsulated in the three-pronged power sector vision of the Buhari administration being driven by Minister of Power Works and House in Babatunde Fashala. The vision, according to the minister, is designed to enhance access to power for all Nigerians. Power is one of the critical action points of the economic recovery and growth plan of President Muhammadu Buhari. Those of you who listened to his New Year address on the 1st of January of this year will recall the details of projects spanning infrastructure containing power infrastructure particularly which my ministry was charged to advance and to complete with vigor. The current installed capacity of the national grid is now over 7,000 megawatts and according to the managing director of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, the company is on track to commission over 90 projects before the end of the year. He added that this will enhance electricity supply and boost commerce and small-scale enterprises all over the country. Transmission has been scattered. Distribution is not working and generation is not working. Generation was only about 3,500. Uh, transmission was 5,500. And uh, distribution was also about 3,000. As of today, as of December, when the last simulation was done, TCN transmission had a capacity of 7,124. And after that, we have added so many other substations. And generation was 7,000 megawatts. And distribution, if you look at last time, we had a peak. Distribution was uh, 5,224. So that's tell you how the 
the minister has transformed the sector. For some of the benefiting communities, the impact of the program to expand the transmission grid on their lives and the immediate communities is huge. This transmission station, and I'm sure it will bring 24-hour uh, power to our federal constituency. When I came in here, this is the largest industrial estate in the whole of West Africa. And we can get value from this enormous community. What we have been endowed, I, I want to make a plea how they can do the role for them so that we can get the benefit of having the industry situated here. For now, efforts aimed at expanding the power grid continue and with the results now showing an improved power supply to most parts of the nation, many Nigerians will certainly be open for more to come to help in expanding commerce and improving on their businesses. And the Join us after this break for more on the program. Coming together for opportunity. And this is what Infrastructure is the backbone of development, which explains the Buhari government's efforts at bridging the facility gap. Infrastructure Weekly is a television package designed to bring you latest information on hundreds of development projects going on in various sectors all over the nation. There is no state in Nigeria today where you will not see our contractors busy at work. Power generation, rural electrification, road rehabilitations, national housing scheme, construction of roads and rail lines across the country, you name it. We are now able to produce 7,000 megawatt of power. That is no longer debatable. Infrastructure Weekly is Nigerians working together for a better Nigeria. So be better informed to take better informed decisions. Watch Infrastructure Weekly, showing on Channel Television, Thursdays 2.30 p.m., NTA Network, Wednesdays 5 p.m., and Co TV News, Fridays at 8 p.m. Infrastructure Weekly, making development known. For inquiries, comments, and feedback, get in touch with us on the social media handles showing on your screen. Since its inception under the Muhammad Buhari administration, the National Housing Program has been generating employment wherever it is cited. Stories abound of host communities who have benefited immensely from the program, not only in terms of employment opportunities for artisans and laborers, but also suppliers and indirect employment for others, such as food vendors. We bring you the Emo and Abu experience on the program. Let's take a listen. The National Housing Program, initiated by the federal government, has yielded its first expected results of creating employment for youths. The initiative of the program is part of efforts by the federal government to get the teaming youths across the country back to work. Those who had no work at all before, they now have hope. Their dignity is restored. They are not on the streets begging. They are in a place where they can work. That is what a nation does. That is what change means. Restore dignity of the people. Give them work to do. The site in Oweri, Imo State, has about 76 units of houses, including a three-story building of 24 flats. The people of Imo State expressed joy over the housing project, while stating that over 200 youths from the community have gained employment on the site. From the food vendors to the number of companies that are employed here, the program is witnessing the use of local building materials, labor, and an ecosystem of growth. It has helped my mom, Shaf, in providing food for us, keeping food in our table every day. We thank God for the site they brought to our... We have I've employed more than, more than 120 people that worked because when we started, we were doing it simultaneously. A lot of them were running concurrently. And then um, we also have uh, people we employed on full scale and those who were employed on on daily basis. The national housing site in Abia State, although still at the foundation level due to changes of the structure after a series of soil tests, is designed to also accommodate many families. It has 24 blocks comprising of 72 units and can take approximately 432 persons. The minister met with Ekwe Mechikwe, an artisan working as a cement mixer on the site. 
It says he earns 15,000 naira daily. Ekweme wants President Mahmoud Buhari to continue initiating projects of this nature so that more jobs can be generated. Any period between four to six weeks, eight weeks, all of the substructure uh, work which you call foundation work in local language would have been would have been done and then so we know that the house is going to stand on very solid footing. The minister expresses satisfaction with the number of employment generated at the site, adding that the entire project was being executed in line with the federal government's local content policy. According to him, there cannot be any content that is more local than it is in this housing project because this administration insists that contractors must use made in Nigeria products. We've seen the quality of wood being used for ordinary plank. Uh, the time when they used to use ordinary plank for form work was perhaps before I entered secondary school. The whole world has moved on to a very quality finish uh, uh, ply, fiber and plywood. And that is the standard that we expect here. That is the standard we expect that those who are supervising for us will also insist on. The housing estate has electrification and road projects to provide power supply, ease of movement, and a comfortable environment for the ultimate consumers. That's all on this week's edition of the program. We'll be back again next week for another interesting package of the program. But before then, be a good citizen, pay your tax and continue to support the infrastructure agenda of the Muhammad Buhari led administration. Also, take ownership of public utilities they are meant to serve us all. Thanks so much for watching. I am your anchor, Apostade Omowi. Bye for now. <laughs> Perfect.